The Yaldin Particle Theory The Explanation of Thermodynamics, Propagation of Rays, Related Phenomena, and the Model of the Atom Developed by Yaldin Corp. Chapter 1 Introduction to Yaldin Particles and Thermodynamics There are many unexplained phenomena and events that happen in our universe. Black holes in the center of galaxies, giant pillars of elemental gases in outer space, dark matter, the cause of gravitational force, earthquakes, volcanoes, the growth of stars in the universe, supernovas, and the redshift for the light that is received from far stars, as well as the redshift for the light that leaves the Earth. There are also other phenomena that one can experience, like heat, light, the electric and magnetic field, radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, x-rays, and nuclear forces. Even though there are a lot of different forces and fields acting upon a person and their environment, all these phenomena can be explained with the assumption of a byproduct of a constant influx of tiny and subatomic particles multidirectionally traveling throughout the universe. The subatomic particles can either travel individually or in groups through space. These subatomic particles will be referred to as Yaldans for the purpose of further discussion and to distinguish them from other tiny particle matter that have different characteristics from different theories. A single Yaldin particle has four main properties, average radius, average speed, average mass, and they are perfectly elastic, no loss in kinetic energy. With these four fundamental properties, Yaldins govern the entire earthly and cosmic phenomenon. A Yaldin particle has no charge, spin, friction, internal structure, nor any other kinds of force fields surrounding it. These fields are the byproduct from the movement and arrangement of the Yaldans. All the phenomena one experiences can be explained by using the four fundamental properties of Yaldans. There will be no need to use models of ideas from science fiction, wormholes, time shrink, fabrics in space that stretch, or a big bang are a few examples of science fiction models that are used today. Newton's second law of motion will be the cornerstone for all calculations in this theory. According to Newton's second law, there cannot be momentum, force, energy, or time without a mass in relative motion to other points of reference in a bounded system. The forces caused by fields, like electric, magnetic, and gravitational field, are due to the change in momentum from the arrangement of Yaldans which constructs that particular field as it interacts with adjacent substances within a certain amount of time. All theories involving energy without the presence of a moving mass will not be included in the Yaldin model since they go against Newton's second law of motion. It is assumed that Yaldins are traveling linearly throughout the universe in all different directions, either traveling as a single particle or as a group of particles. Then the total net summation of their velocities in any region of space will not be zero but close to zero due to the existence of objects, black holes, stars, planets, and elemental gases in the universe. Each Yaldin particle will also be assumed to have a spherical shape with an average radius of ry, an average mass of my, an average speed of sy, and they are perfectly elastic, loses no kinetic energy after each collision. These Yaldins could have a different shape, but for purposes of calculations, each one will have an average spherical shape. The units of the metric system will be used for the purposes of calculations in the Yaldin model. The Yaldin's density is the number of Yaldins which traveled multidirectionally through an imaginary one square meter area plane per one second of time from one side of that plane to the other side. Yaldin's density is not the density of a single Yaldin speck, but the total number of individual Yaldins which pass through one side of a given square unit plane in one second of time. In other words, Yaldins have an average speed and travel in all different directions in space. Then the number counts of Yaldins that pass through an area plane of one square meter per one second in time from one side of that square meter area plane will be the Yaldin's density in that region of space. A figure representing the Yaldin's density per one second in time through one side of one square meter. 
whereas the density of a single Yaldin speck will be its mass divided by the volume it occupies. Then, formula for the mass density of a single Yaldin speck. As stated above, Yaldins will either travel individually or in groups. The Yaldins which travel in groups will have a density of raw g, number of Yaldin groups divided by meter squared per second. The average number of Yaldins contained in one group of Yaldin specs will be assumed to be equal to ng. Then the total number of Yaldins that pass through the one square meter area plane within one second of time by the combined density of raw y and raw g will equal raw in empty space, far from any substance. Yaldins travel linearly as a single particle or as a group of particles. The Yaldins that travel individually through the universe in straight lines will be called traveling Yaldins. They will be traveling as an individual Yaldin speck, not as a group of Yaldins. The Yaldins that travel linearly in groups will be known as traveling groups. Calculating the number of Yaldins in one cubic meter. As stated before, Ra is the number of Yaldins, ny, which pass through one side of a given plane of one square meter within one second of time. As these Yaldins pass through the given plane in one second, they will travel a certain distance from that plane which will be known as d, distance in meters. After they travel that distance in one second, the number of Yaldins that occupy the space from d to the given plane will be equal to ra, the number of Yaldins contained within an imaginary rectangular box, with a base of one square meter and a height of d. See following figure 1.2 and 1.3. Figure 1.2, the number of Yaldins which pass through a one square meter plane within one second of time. The distance will be equal to the average speed times one second. Then, let the volume of the rectangular box be equal to VB. After substituting the value of D from equation 1, 2 above. Then, the number of Yaldins that entered the box with a dimension of 1 meter by 1 meter by d from the base within 1 second of time will be equal to sigma double prime. Figure 1.3. A rectangular box. This contains the number of Yaldins that is equal to sigma double prime at any moment of time. Let the number of Yaldins that enter from one side of a 1 cubic meter box equal sigma prime after substituting the value of sigma prime and VB. Then, figure 1.4. To calculate the number of Yaldins contained within a one cubic meter box from one side of the cube, which is equal to sigma prime. Figure 1.5. The number of Yaldins that enter from one side of a cubic meter box is equal to sigma prime at any moment in time. Sigma will equal the total number of Yaldins that enter from all six sides of a one cubic meter box at any moment of time. After substituting the value of then, during any instance in time, if a one cubic meter volume in outer space far from any object is taken, and the momentum of each Yaldin particle within the box are all added together as a scalar value regardless of direction, then the total momentum of all the particles within that one cubic meter box will be m y. Since the total number of Yaldins that occupy a one cubic meter volume at any moment of time and outer space is sigma, and the average speed of each Yaldin is s y, then where m y is the mass of a single Yaldin particle, due to the perfect elasticity of a Yaldin particle, the value of my will be conserved throughout the entire universe. In other words, if a one cubic meter volume is taken anywhere in the universe, even inside objects, including the atoms and molecules, then the total momentum of all the matter, Yaldins, atoms, and molecules, within that cubic meter will still be equal to my. The average speed of Yaldin particles inside objects will be less than sy. SY is the average speed of Yaldins in empty space. Then the number of Yaldins per cubic unit inside objects will be greater than the number of Yaldins per cubic unit in empty space. So the closer the atoms or molecules are, the greater the number of Yaldins per cubic unit will become among the atoms or molecules of that substance. Overall, the substances that are more dense, atoms or molecules that are closer together with a slower rate of oscillation, 
will harbor a greater number of Yaldens per cubic unit volume with a lower average speed in order to maintain the conservation of momentum throughout the entire universe. The conservation of momentum will force Yaldin particles everywhere in the space between atoms and molecules of any object in the universe. As previously mentioned, Yaldins travel throughout the universe individually or in groups. The Yaldins that travel in groups, travel in groups, will constantly strike the atoms and molecules of objects, causing them to vibrate back and forth around their rest points. This vibration will be governed by the law of simple harmonic motion. As atoms or molecules of an object are hit by traveling groups of Yaldins, these atoms or molecules will vibrate along their rest points, ejecting groups of Yaldins from the opposite side. As these groups of Yaldins become ejected, there will be a vacant space that must be filled. The conservation of momentum will force individual Yaldin particles to refill the space created from the ejected groups of Yaldins. The refill of Yaldin particles will usually provide a constant supply of Yaldins for the atoms or molecules to constantly eject, as traveling groups continually strike the object. These ejected groups of Yaldins will continue to travel inside the object and strike the next adjacent atom or molecule until all the atoms and molecules of that object will stay in constant vibration as the traveling groups of Yaldins continually strike that object. This constant vibration from all the atoms and molecules of an object will cause the object to constantly release groups of Yaldins. This constant release of propagated groups of Yaldins from the object will be infrared and possibly other kinds of propagated rays. All objects in the universe, not including black holes, will emit infrared at a steady state, far away from any source of extra external energy, for example heat, due to the existence of traveling groups of Yaldins, the conservation of momentum, and simple harmonic motion. If an external source of heat is consistently applied to an object, the object's steady rate will change. The external source of heat will increase the number of Yaldin particles that reside between the atoms. This increase will result in a higher value for sigma in that object. A higher value for sigma will cause the atoms of that object to propagate groups of Yaldins with a higher momentum, increased temperature, than its steady state. These propagated groups with a higher momentum will cause the molecules of that object to become pushed further away from each other than when in steady state. Then the object will expand as the molecules become further displaced, allowing a greater chance for the atoms and molecules and mixtures to react and form different compounds. For example, as the molecules of a fuel exposed to oxygen become heated, they will react with the oxygen and produce new chemical compounds. As the fuel is heated, the number of Yaldins around the fuel molecules will increase and force those molecules to become further displaced as they oscillate. The larger displacement will cause the molecules in the fuel to vibrate with a greater distance, span, from the breast point. This greater distance of oscillation will bring the fuel and oxygen molecules closer to one another, giving them a greater chance to react, as the traveling groups of Yaldins bombard the fuel and oxygen molecules. The fuel and oxygen both can harbor a certain amount of Yaldin particles around their molecules. As the fuel and oxygen react, they will form new compounds. The new compounds formed from the chemical reaction will also harbor certain amounts of Yaldin particles between their molecules. The certain amount of Yaldins that the new compounds can harbor will be less than the amount of Yaldins that the fuel and oxygen could harbor prior to the chemical reaction. Then there will be an extra amount of Yaldins among the new compounds than the conservation of momentum will allow. This extra amount of Yaldins will be propagated as the traveling groups of Yaldins bombard the molecules in the new compounds and be released as extra heat. This release of extra heat will continue the chemical reaction between the fuel and oxygen until there is no more oxygen or fuel available. The continual release of heat from the new compounds formed is the flame of a fire. Figure 1.6, a rough diagram representing the expansion of an element after it is heated by an external source. The molecules of the heated system will come to a closer point to one another as they oscillate about their rest points. In a similar way, sugar and oxygen molecules also harbor more Yaldins than its new components, H2O and CO2. 
After being metabolized in a body, the new components will have extra Yaldans among them. The increase in the number of the Yaldans around the new components, H2O and CO2, will raise the value of sigma higher than the conservation of momentum will allow. As a result, the new components will radiate extra heat into the body due to the bombardment from the traveling groups of Yaldans. Compressing gas molecules is an example to increase the value of sigma more than the conservation of momentum will allow. As the molecules of the compressed gas are hit by the traveling groups of Yaldans, they will propagate, radiate, the extra amount of Yaldans in the form of propagated groups of infrared heat into the surrounding environment until the conservation of momentum is maintained. After the conservation of momentum is maintained, the value of sigma in the compressed gas will be greater when compared to the value of sigma in the non-compressed gas. Then there will be more Yaldan particles per cubic unit among the molecules of the compressed gas since the molecules in the compressed gas will be moving with a slower average speed, less momentum. In other words, the conservation of momentum will allow a greater number of Yaldans to occupy the space among the molecules and atoms in the compressed gas. For example, 4 liters of gas at room temperature is compressed into 1 liter. After the conservation of momentum is maintained and the compressed gas is returned to room temperature, the value of the remaining sigma in the 1 liter of compressed gas will be greater than the value of sigma in 1 liter of non-compressed gas. Even though 4 liters of gas will have more Yaldan particles among the molecules than the amount of Yaldans in the same gas after compression, Friction is another example where the release of harbored Yaldans among the molecules as heat is applied by removing the top layer of surface molecules in a substance.